Hello guys, hope everyone is doing well. Hope you will enjoy this tutorial. If you have any question, uh, you can comment just below. I will answer it with pleasure. Let's go. Okay guys, so first step, we need to create some solid geometry to make our base of our bag. So here is my image reference. As you can see, on this middle shape, you, we have some cube with a larger base that's on the top. So I recreate it on Cinema 4D. Uh, and I take care to create a good topology with edge at same distance from left to the right. That way I can put it on the subdivision surface. And you see we have smooth edge. Very important to have a smooth edge. That way we will avoid collision on Marvelous Designer. So when we are happy with your patron, you can go there, file, export, FBX. Okay, so here we are on Marvelous Designer. So first step, we need to import our OBJ create in Cinema 4D. That way you go to file, import, OBJ, and you select here. Make sure scale of your patron is about that size on the square. Very important for the collision and the, um, the subdivision surface, the, um, the detail of your fabric. Bigger are the patron. Uh, slower will be simulation, but higher will be resolution. So that size is okay. So next, we need to cover this patron with fabric. So to do it, we go on to the pattern window. Let's go there, there, and we will create a manual polygon. And we just need to follow preview shape on 2D window. Okay, and very simple. You need, you see. Next. We need to duplicate it there. So we just need to place it really close to our patron. That way. And next, we need to create shape the same here, same here and same here. Because it's symmetrical, we just need to create two shapes, that one and that one. After, we will duplicate it in, sy in symmetry. Okay. For that one, just we just need the rectangle, I think. About that size. Let's see, look bigger. Okay. Après smash, to be sure I'm 90 degrees. Okay, I will place it there, there. It's too large, so we need to reduce it. We need to decrease the height. So we need to rotate it about that one. Looks okay. Now we can mirror paste it. Sorry, not that one. Copy, mirror paste. Okay, great. It's look a tiny big, tiny big. So let's reduce it a little bit more. Yeah, it looks okay now. So we need to create the top now. Just here. Okay. 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 
same here, but larger. Okay, looks good. Uh, to don't be annoyed by uh, simulate um, gravity, we need to go to settings, preference, go to simulation, gravity, by default it's 500, so everything go down because of the um, natural gravity on, on the Earth, but we don't want gravity, we need to go to zero. Okay, no, we will not bother by everything go down on the floor. Next, we need to sewing everything. Okay, everything is sewing now, but as you can see, it looks quite wavy and not uh, not so good. We want something very, uh, very flat. First, you see, uh, when it's dark, it need uh, means um, the normal on on the wrong way. So we just need to flip normal for the dark side. Flip normal. Okay. Oh, I forgot to sewing that one too. Okay. Next, we need to select both pattern and um, to be very easy on the way of we work and very fast. We will not decrease size of our pattern, we decrease shink rate weft and shink rate warp. That way we go to 90s and 90s. And you see, by default, it follow very good uh, uh, art surface of shape. And okay, so next, as you can see on the face of our bag, I create some shapes there. It's just to add more definition and separate um, the side face to the front face clearly. As you, we can see on reference, we have got this nice rigid rectangle and I would like to recreate it on Marvelous. Uh, and that way we've got more control from each inflation between this face and the side. And also we can solidify this rectangle, for example. And yeah, that's well, we, we have this kind of render. So let's focus on that side. As you can see, we've got some nice inflated um, modeling there, fabrics. And I will show you how to have this kind of render on Marvelous Designer. So let's use that face. Let's go there to layer clone over. Okay. You can go to solidify for, no, not solidify, sorry. You can go to freeze for now for this one. That way we you will avoid every bug and will be much faster for your simulation. So all, always when you don't need some garment, you can go to solidify and that way you can be focused only on one side of your rendering. Okay, now here's the tricky part. So we want having this kind of result. You see this nice inflated pattern there with all of this round and curvy model. So we've got this side connect to this free side. What we want to do is go to normal 
string shell left, decrease a little bit particle distance. And now we want to duplicate one more time. So now we've got three layers. Um, next, we want to remove linkage edited. So now I this one and remove to linkage it to this one. So I can play this with this one value only. Let's create some internal line to it. About eight. We see eight parts, so seven cuts will be okay. Let's select both. Move it here. And three more. Just here. If it's not the perfect distance, it's okay. It's even better. Because we want something uh, craft end by humans look. So if it's too perfect, it will not look uh, enough realistic. So the sky on difference between both lines is okay. Maybe a tiny more equal like this. Yeah, sure. Um, now we want to inflate it. So let's say 150, 150. Mm, it's too much. One ten to one ten. Yeah, so yeah, I did kind of mistake, guys. Yeah, so first we want to inflate that one. So let's say 150, 150. See what, what we've got. It's too much. Let's start by 110 to 110, 120 to 120. Let's add some pressure. And you see, start to inflate it slowly and very smooth, like a pneumatic or liter one. Why is this nice looking? Because on my preset, I choose trim full grain liter. Uh, you see, if I just select the default simulation, you see how it looks. Totally different looking, very uh, definitive wrinkles, and for this case, we don't want that. We want trim full grain litter. That's the one we, we need for, the, for this kind of inflated fabric. So we can push the value even more, but I suggest you to really move slowly, slowly the value uh, until you've got something you look like, because this pattern is kind of semi-rigid pattern, uh, fabric, uh, preset value, so we need to take care, really take care of or inflated look, 150 to 150, and I think 160 to 160, that's the one we need. Yeah, you see it's very, very inflated, but very round and smooth uh, topology and, uh, and geometry. Yeah, the, yeah, so, we are here with the curve. Here, now we need to add some cut line. 
and to go we need to go to internal polygon lines and start created start creating internal line okay see is our first internal line make sure it's really inserted right with the extremity of our pattern it's really important for avoid any bug or glitch into viewport uh, so we want about seven cuts like here so let's duplicate ctrl c ctrl v our internal line let's move a little bit on the top, bottom uh, and we want three more cuts yeah like here make sure I, yeah, it's two okay Yeah, we want about equal space between both lines, but if it's not perfectly even, it's okay. It's even better because we will have more craft hand look than uh, if we have exactly the same, it will look uh, very uh, robotic and CGI. So make sure you, you create imperfection. Um, that way it will look more realistic at the end. So let's play simulate, see what we've got. Nothing really happened now because we want to changing some value of our internal line. Uh, yes, let's go to 100 and 200 fold. So that's fold, uh, it will uh, change how fabric interacts with the line. The side of fabric push uh, with the line. So this value will look okay and we want to add some elastic. So let's see how it looks now. So you see, with this kind of value, we start having some nice bouncy geometry between both lines and we can increase to 360 yeah just before doing this press smash and q and we can solidify this one as well um, okay uh, that way we will we'll avoid any bugs Yeah, we still have some bugs, but hmm, because it's too much, uh, it's too much on the line. And you see some bad intersections there. My fault. We really need to interact clearly. We take care about the value here. 360 is much too much. So let's stay, stay at what 30 now. It looks not good. 200. To 50. Okay. Now we start having something really interesting. Look. Um, Yeah, you see. Uh, 
you know, my, by moving this value, you can have totally different kind of look of your ribbon. And even we can add some elasticity to our line. Something like 2 and 30. Okay, for the handle, um, you know, this is my reference for creating the handle. So as you can see, we've got four uh, shape on our bag. So first step is to create a shape, internal shape here. You can go here for create this shape. And then we need to create uh, one pattern on the bottom, one pattern on the top, and create a C wing just on the top for each one. So that's way we can have this nice, nice hole. And next, I model this one in Cinema 4D and import. Uh, I import uh, FBX. Um, no, I import add. Reproduce the same principle you create here four times. And as you can see, if I select both, this is the handle. And they separated each handle on two parts. So you need to create one part first. So as you can see, same principle for on the bottom, one side on the back and one long side on the top. Merge, sewing them both equal. And that way we will have the handle. We create this nice circle just by creating a rectangle and merge, merge left side to right side. And so yeah, here's the cinema for the scene. And um, first, let's see a little bit about texturing, what I did. So let's have a preview. Uh, yes, we can. Yeah, let's have a preview. Yeah, so all credits are came from Vincent Trinks. I will put on description. Uh, it's a free file you can download it on each channel, and uh, yeah, I just tweak some value on color correction, but nothing fancy. Uh, in fact, what it make this uh, material so nice and complex is because. All of this bump blender together, merge together, create this complex look of fabric. And of, of course, this displacement. Uh, yeah, displacement of fabric. You see, it's very um, organic, organic look. Um, yeah. We can maybe have a closer look there. And as you can see, I add some hair, hair material. Yeah, and you see, adding add, it add even more uh, realist, re realism to the material and look more soft, int interesting look. 
So yeah, I really suggest you to adhere to, um, to fabric uh, uh, garments or create even more complexity and interesting uh, results. You see it's very hairy and on the um, silhouette of our model, it had this nice hair and I think it's working really, really well. If we go a little bit deeper on our parameters, as you can see, I add some thickness to the hair. Uh, really, really thin on the tip and quite thin on the on the roots. Some variation also. Uh, the scale also, um, it's had more variation. Some freeze, as you can see. Um, we need some freeze, some kink as well. And curl. Yeah, both of these parameters for achieve this kind of look. And uh, I have a big amount of hair, huge amount of hair. So hope your computer is enough uh, powerful. Um, what I can suggest you is start with low value and more and more you okay with how it look, you will increase it for finite results. Okay. Now let's let's talk a tiny bit about this cloud animation. Yeah, so yeah, many person ask me how I did, but in fact you will see it's very simple. It's like a trick. Someone think it was Houdini, but in fact it's just VDBs. You see the green one are all of these clouds. Let's go on different angle of camera to see what I mean. So you see, it's it's all cloud. Different clouds. Uh, I pick some uh, on a VDB pack, and I put them on the null and I animate, you see the scale of that null. Just a scale, it's just a scale uh, with the axis center on the center of all of this cloud, make a, like make a, just a one shape. And yeah, from O dot, Three five to one dot five scale, and because all of these clouds are different and different scale from each one, and they are placed on different uh, scale on z axis, we we've got this kind of complex. Tiny, tiny here, tiny clouds here, uh, medium cl uh, cloud here, big cloud here, both are different axes that make it so complex. So it's, a, I think it's a nice trick you can use for any kind of um, of asset to 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 make your product even more beautiful. So now we can talk a little bit also with camera. So because you, as you see here, it's quite boring, uh, boring scale of each element. Um, if I put the product back, you see it's very, very boring. But if we add this movement camera, as you can see, it starts to be a very interesting look and uh, dynamic. So I pro oh, I proceed. I put my product on center, very important. Um, I create a circle and you see my axis point of my circle, it's on same point 
design my product. I put my camera aligned to spline to this circle, and on my target, I put a center target, this one. So you see, that way, I can really choose uh, which exactly which angle I, I need this ta cube target. Let's go back there. So for animation, Yeah, so for animation, I just rotate. I just rotate my circle. So um, few uh, degrees to the right, only fifty degrees here, yeah. and also tiny bit of y axis. So you see all of this detail uh, you add to your animation, it will create something quite complex with only few uh, few tweaks. And yeah, using um, circle spline for your camera animations that will make it um, um, very regular. Uh, so I really recommend you to use a circle or spline for animated your camera. It will be much more professional and efficient. Yeah. So yeah, very first, I've got this dome light uh, with no texture on it, it's just for add uh, some smooth global lighting on it, like uh, illum illuminance uh, radiant so, or infinite light. Next, I've got one big rim light, we are starting uh, to cut and understand the silhouette of our product. Next I've got a top big one, you see my, my, my light are, are really, 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 really big uh, for having this smooth uh, shade. Bigger are your light, smoother are your shading. Next, I've got the right one. Yeah, for having this one, it's very, very uh, subtitle, but we starting having something interesting there. Another rim. I combine two rim on this both sides. Yeah, so that way we understand more um, um, the geometry of our sleeves there, and for fi finally, I want another small texture um, light on the top. So that way, um, we have a very bright line there, something very dark there, and another very light light here and that way we've got some nice rhythm and we understand both ripple of our left side of our bag and uh, yeah you can see Jack Mus logo and Nike are shiny because I just add some overall there emission weight and I animate this emission weight from 3.4 to 6. Yeah, because that way I have something ev evolutive on my animation, it had uh, more rhythm. Yeah, so both lighting are simple area light, one dome light with nothing on it and some texture 
glow wet, glowy. Yeah, fan highly and post production, guys. Uh, just to yeah, show you before, uh, was kind of boring and sad feeling. And with this adjustment layer, you see by adding uh, by adding some ash yeah, for start, some level, some curves, some HU saturation, and some lumetri colors. Uh, we have totally different feeling. Yeah, every tutorial, I, I, it's about always the same process, but uh, I would like to show, show you how it's important, the post-production. Never uh, under, under underestimate, underrate the post-production um, session for final, uh, finalize your work uh, well. Uh, yeah, and also some time warp during my sequence. Uh, I really like to use time warp, so at the start it's even more fast. And at the end, it's very smaller. Mm -hmm.